Shalom. I pray that the Lord will graciously bless all of you as you join me in our worship today. Our devotion is found in Numbers chapter 16, verses 47 to 48. So Aaron did as Moses said and ran into the midst of the assembly. The plague had already started among the people, but Aaron offered the incense and made atonement for them. He stood between the living and the dead, and the plague stopped. There was a conspiracy of rebellion in the Israelite camp. Korah, the leader of this movement, was a Levite and a cousin of Moses. The tent of Korah and the Korahites was on the south side of the tabernacle, was near the encampment of the tribe of Reuben, the tent of Dathan and Abraham, two princes of the tribe. These princes readily joined in his ambitious scheme. Being descendants of the elder son of Jacob, they claimed that the civil authority belonged to them, and they determined to divide with Korah the honor of the priesthood. The conspiracy was on position, power, and authority. They were envious of Moses' leadership and his administrative position as well as Aaron's priesthood. The envy turned into jealousy, and then jealousy into hatred against God's anointed. They said in Numbers 16 verse 3, You take too much upon yourself, for all the congregation is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Why then you exalt yourself above the assembly of the Lord? Number 16, verse 3. The conspiracy of Korah, Datan, and Abraham was similar with that of Satan and his angel in heaven. Satan envied Jesus' position as equal with God. He envied that Jesus was involved and consulted in the creation of the world. Jesus was consulted and he was also the captain of the angel. And Satan was jealous of Christ and he successfully convinced one-third of the angels to follow him. Korah, too, was able to get the sympathy of 250 Levites and the two princes of the tribe of Simeon, Dathan, and Abraham. Rebellion is a strong word that has a powerful effect upon the hearts and soul of men. Rebellion, when you break it down, appears like rebel lion. A rebellious person has the pride of a lion, thinking of himself alone, who will fight and bring violence against anyone who infringes upon his right to rule. A lion is called the king of the jungle for his ferocity and power to kill. So are the rebellious people on the face of the earth. They tend to think of themselves as the king of their own dominion. Proverbs 28 verse 2, When a country is rebellious, it has many rulers. But a man of understanding and knowledge maintains order. Moses was called by God to lead the Israelite from Egypt to Canaan. It was not a position that he aspired for. He gave many excuses for not accepting the call, but God as someone to help him in the work, and that was Aaron. Aaron too never asked to be the high priest, but God chose him and his children from the tribe of Levi to be the priests over Israel. Therefore, rebellion against God's anointed is a rebellion against God himself. King Saul was envious, jealous, and hated David and seek to kill him. But David has many occasions and chances to kill King Saul, but he refrained to do so because he was the Lord's anointed. There are many, many church members who have the attitude of Korah. They say, preachers, I don't need you to tell how to act, what to do, and what not to do. 
I am as good as my neighbor, even better than many. I can hear from God just as much as you can. I don't need church. I don't need teachers. I can get all on myself. If I need like, I want to do something for God. I don't need the approval of any pastor because I can hear the voice of God just as you do. And I don't need the approval of any pastor because I can hear that voice. Brethren, if you have the attitude of Korah, stop immediately. Instead, you can learn the truth of the Bible by yourself, but let not pride control your spirit and cause you to question the anointing and the calling the pastors have. Korah, Dathan, and Abram failed to learn the lesson of rebellion of Miriam and Aaron against Moses. You see, Miriam and Aaron began to talk against Moses because of his Cushite wife, for the, he had married a Cushite. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses, they asked. Hasn't he also spoken to us? And the Lord heard this. Numbers 12, verses 1 and 2. God called his sibling to him and spoke to them, saying, When a prophet of the Lord is among you, I myself reveal to him in vision. I will speak to him in dream, but this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddle. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? When the cloud lifted from above the tent, there stood Miriam, leprous like snow. Numbers 12.10 so Miriam was confined outside the camp seven days and the people did not move till she was brought back. You see, social distancing was practiced during the time of Moses and was practiced today. Those who are infected with coronavirus should be quarantined and those who are healthy should distance themselves from the sick one. Korah and his followers failed to learn the lesson from the experience of Miriam, who like themselves questioned the leadership of Moses. They decided to call a meeting and confront Moses with their grievances. Now it's one thing to come to God with question and concern, but it's another thing altogether to come to God with the attitude of a know-it-all. The accusation against Moses and Aaron was simple. They accused Moses and Aaron of taking too much power upon themselves. Their attitude was one that we have heard so many times. Just who do you think you are? Who do you think you are, Moses? What gives you the right to exercise the authority that you have of us? Are we not as good as you are? Are we not as holy before God as you are? What makes you any better than us? And the same goes for Aaron. Moses immediately fell on his face before God. He didn't lash back at them. Instead, Moses fell down and prayed for this man and all of the camp of Israel. For Moses knew that what they had done was not against him, but against God. The act of defiance against Moses and Aaron and against God would not go unanswered. In Proverbs 16, verse 18, Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. These defiant Jews were about to find out just how terrible God's power of destruction can be. Number 16, 13, he says, These defiant men even confess that they thought that the land of Egypt was better than the promised land. They called Egypt the land of milk and honey. They have forgotten that Egypt was a house of bondage, of slavery and cruelty. 
Oh, how terrible it is when we begin to live in rebellion against the law of God. Isaiah 5 verse 20 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. When we listen to the voice of Satan and allow pride and jealousy to arise in us, our vision of right and wrong are screwed. Moses knew that God is not pleased with their rebellion. He interceded for them to merciful and gracious God. O oh God, he said, God of the spirit of all mankind, will you be angry with the entire assembly when only one man sinned? Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to the assembly, Move away from the tent of Korah, Dathan, and Abraham. Moses got up and went to Dathan and Abraham. And the elders of Israel followed him. He warned the assembly, Move back from the tent of these wicked men. Do not touch anything belong to them, or you will be swept away because of all their sin. So they moved away from the tent of Korah, Dathan, and Abraham. Dathan and Abraham came out and were standing with their wives and children and little ones at the entrance of the tent. Then Moses said, This is how will you know that the Lord has sent me to do all this thing, and that it was not my idea. If these men die a natural death and experience only what usually happened to men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord brings about something totally new, and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them with everything that belongs to them, then they go alive into the grave. Then you will know that these men have treated the Lord with contempt. As soon as he finished saying all this, the ground opened before them, and the earth swallowed them with their household, all of Korah's men, and all their possession. They went alive into the grave, and everything they owned, the earth closed above them, and they perished and were gone from the community. At the Christ, all the Israelites around them fled, shouting, The earth is going to swallow us too. And then the fire came from the Lord and consumed the 250 men who offered offering of incense to the Lord. The next day, the whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. They said, you have killed the Lord's people. But when the assembly gathered in opposition to God's and Moses and turned toward the tent of meeting, suddenly the clouds covered it and the glory of the Lord appeared. Then Moses and Aaron went to the front of the tent of meeting. And the Lord said to Moses, Get away from this assembly, so I can put an end of them at once. Then Moses and Aaron take the censer and put incense in it, along with fire from the altar, and hurry to the assembly, and make atonement for them. The wrath has come from the Lord, and the plague started. So Aaron did as Moses said, and he ran into the midst of the assembly. The plague has started among the people. But Aaron offered the incense and made atonement for them. He stood between the living and the dead, and the plague was dead. But 14,700 people died in the plague. In addition to those who died because of Korah, then Aaron returned to Moses at the entrance of the tent of meeting, for the plague has stopped. I'm glad that pastors and church members all over the world form a prayer change to offer prayer of atonement that God would forgive the sins of rebellion against God's law. The Bible is clear concerning 
mankind. So he said, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. First John 3 verse 4, Who commit sin also commit lawlessness, for sin is lawlessness. Romans 6 23, For the wages of sin is death. You see, sin is worse than coronavirus. Sin kills both body and soul. Coronavirus kills only the body, but not the soul. Jesus made it clear that as a result of sin, reign in our lives of weakened men, they only think of destroying each other. Jesus told his disciples, and the audience who listened to him saying, I tell you, my friend, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you can fear. Fear him after the killing of the body has no power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear God. Luke 12, verses 4 to 6. Who are we to fear and reverence? It is God. Fear God and keep his commandment. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every man into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. The world is facing a crisis. Scientists scramble to find vaccine to cure COVID-19. Medical staff sacrifice their lives to take care of the sick. The world economy is on the downturn due to the lockdown. People lost their job and distress and anxiety crowded their mind. Many lost their lives due to COVID-19 and many died without the hope of the resurrection. Pastor Eric Loy sermon on week two of 100 days of prayer entitled What We Look at Sin Like We Look at COVID-19. We are greatly afraid of COVID-19, but they to sin against God. People social distancing themselves from COVID-19 patients, but we love the world and the things of the world that distance us from God. We saturated the media with the information concerning the danger of COVID-19, but we are not enthusiastic to inform people of the danger of sin. Christians are complacent and not alert with the plague of sin, while Satan and his agent are working hard to lure men into perdition. We are not standing between the living and the dead. The good news is that we have a heavenly high priest that ministers in heavenly sanctuary. His name is Jesus Christ. We can see him with our spiritual eye ran among the people, crying that incense, that censer filled with his prayer to the fathers on our behalf. He came and stood before the living God and the soul of death man as our intercessor. The judgment of God was set before every one of us, to die in the pit of the flame, just as Korah did. But Jesus came running from the, from the glory, the Sukkina glory of God dwell among men, and he stands today, having been nailed to an old cross, giving his blood as payment for our sin, and risen from the dead. Jesus is standing there between the living and the dead. Dear friends, sin is not a game to play with. Whether our hearts are right and our spirit are right is a matter of life and death. All of mankind die in an, in an instant of time when Adam took the bite in the Garden of Eden. The price of sin is death, eternal death. We were born death, spiritually death. In number 16, verse 50, we see that Aaron and Moses returned to the door of the temple and the plague stopped. Jesus went down to earth 2,000 years ago. He stood before the living and the death. He gave the world the message of eternal life. He gave the victim of sin and death his own blood. He took the keys of death, 
hell and the grave. And today the power of death is stopped. Jesus is the res resurrection and the life. And all who have life must come to him. Friends, Jesus is still holding that censer with burning incense. He ministers in the heavenly sanctuary as we continue to offer our prayer of faith to heaven on behalf of the chaotic world. Jesus takes that prayer to God the Father. The Holy Spirit also intercedes on behalf of his children in this chaotic world. Paul said, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our distress, for we don't even know what we should pray for, nor how we should pray. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groaning that we can not express in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us in harmony with God's own will. Romans 8 verses 26 to 7. Keep on praying. Keep on trusting. Keep on believing that Jesus stands between the living and the death. And he can stop the coronavirus. Jesus can also stop that virus of sin. You see, he has given that vaccine and that is his own blood. Let us have a jab of that vaccine in our life that we can be healed. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you are still standing between the living and the dead. That you are still holding that censer with the incense burning, which is your prayer and the prayer of the Holy Spirit on our behalf. Lord, when you hear that prayer of Jesus and the smoke of the incense appear before you, may we find pleasing in your sight and forgive our sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.